Hey guys, what's up? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com where you learn to code smarter. Let's jump right into it today. All right, we're gonna be building the tic-tac-toe project. I am so excited for this one. I've been building up to this for so long and now you guys are gonna be on the same page with me and we're gonna build the tic-tac-toe game, all right? So let's just get started. So let's come here. And before I start talking about any of this, let's just start off with what it's gonna look like when you're done building it, okay? And you're gonna be able to share this with everybody. So it's gonna be pretty simple and here's what it's gonna look like, all right? Not the fanciest thing you've ever seen, but hey, it's something. So you have three choices, rock, paper, scissors, and you're playing against the computer, okay? So let's say we picked rock. The computer picked paper, what just happened? Well, paper beats rock, and so if you look at the computer score, he got one, and you still have zero. You, my friend, are not a very good rock, paper, scissors player. Let's try again, all right? We have to beat the computer, so let's go. Rock, that's a tie, that's pretty good. I think that since the computer already picked rock, he's probably gonna pick um, scissors next time. So to prepare for scissors, I'm gonna pick rock. Boom! <laughs> Okay, so that was pretty awesome, but that was not planned. The game is not rigged at all. It's supposed to be random, but I'm pretty good at reading random computers. Hmm, let's see, he picked scissors, so maybe he's gonna pick uh, scissors again. Let's stick with rock. Oh, he picked rock. Paper? Okay, so he picked rock, we picked paper. We want, we have a score of two. Uh, the computer has a score of one. We can keep on going forever, but I'm gonna end it for now. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual project and what you need to do to get it to work. As you can see here, I have hidden these functions from you. So choice to number, number to choice, random choice number, and choice result. Those are the only four functions that you need to complete in order to complete this entire project. Everything else I have done for you. So you don't need to touch anything else. Okay, you pretty much just need to complete those four functions and when you're done completing them, your entire game will run. Another thing I've done to help you out is I've added some tests. So if you uncomment line 73, uh, this line right here, and run it, and if your functions pass the test, then most of your functions are correct. Some of the functions it's hard to write tests for. For example, random computer choice, if you're randomly generating choices, it's kind of hard for me to test it, all right? So that one, you kind of just have to do it correctly. All right, further explanation of the project. So you have choice to number function. What does that want? Well, let's say I give you rock, you should give me back one. If I give you paper, you should give me back two. If I give you scissors, you should give me back three, all right? What's the number of choice functions job? Okay, well, if I give you a number like one, you should give me back rock. If I give you two, you give me back paper. And if I give you three, you give me back scissors, okay? So both of those functions complement each other, okay? They're kind of the inverses of each other. Now, let's talk about random computer choice function. What does that do? Well, the computer needs to be able to generate random choices, okay? So we need to use the random module that I've imported on line five. I have also added some hints for you guys on how to use the random module. So here, if I show you guys the problem, I have added some hints for you here, okay? So random computer choice. So I want you to look up what random.choice does and how to use it. In my solution video, I'm gonna go through the whole solution, so if you couldn't figure it out, you're gonna learn anyways. But I want you to be able to exercise some researching skills and develop your program so, uh, programmer's ability of like solving things by researching it on Google or Stack Overflow or something like that, all right? Because that's important. A lot of the times I'm on Stack Overflow or Google trying to figure out a problem. So figure out how to use random.choice to make the computer randomly choose between rock, paper, and scissors. Um, okay, let's go, so it's, just to give you a hint, it's gonna be a one-line solution, like return, random.choice, and then pass in rock, paper, scissors, the computer's gonna return one of those every time. Okay. Now, the choice result function is gonna be the 
meat of the project that's going to be every it, it you know the whole logic of the project is pretty much going to be here so what's going on here well you have a computer score and human score which is up here the global variable maybe i'll explain that i'll explain that to you guys definitely in the solution but for now let's not worry so much about it just focus on not removing these lines when you come down here and you start coding this up, well, essentially what you're gonna be doing in choice result is you're given the human choice and you're given the computer choice. So using that, you figure out who won. So for example, if human choice was rock and computer choice was paper, well, paper beats rock. So in this case, computer should win. So actually, I, I, this should actually be this. computer score is equal to like that okay so I'm sorry I had it wrong I'll fix it up when you guys get the link you'll have the fixed version so since paper beats rock computer score should be incremented by one where's computer score it's right here human score is also right here okay so then you can check hey if computer choice was uh, I don't know whatever then you can increment based on that. But what if it was a tie? What if they both had the same thing? Well, in that case, you don't have to do any incrementing. You can just print tie or you don't even have to check for that condition, okay? So that's the simple answer to that. How are you gonna do choice result? Entirely up to you. I would suggest doing bunch of if, else if, if type of statements, okay? So you're gonna have bunch of if conditions. You're gonna check rock against paper, paper against rock. What if human picks this and the computer picks that? So you get to exercise some of your if then statements. There is a clever way of doing it, which I will explain to you guys in the solution video. But for now, just use your if then type of statements to do this, okay? Choice to number, number to choice. I've kind of given you guys an example of how to do it. So you guys should be good on that. And other than that, I think you guys, let's see what else I need to explain here. Test all, yep, just uncomment this and test some of your functions. You know, if you give choice a number, if you give it rock, it should return zero. If you give it paper, it should return one. And, uh, you know, on the other hand, vice versa, pretty much number to choice. If you give it zero, it gives you rock. If you give it one, it should give you paper. Everything else, helps you all this stuff at the bottom is it helps make the GUI the graphical user interface of the project and it wraps up your logic in and makes it a part of the game okay so here if your code is not completed and you try to run the game uh, you're gonna get back some stuff that that doesn't make much sense okay so it's not gonna make sense but once you complete all of these functions the whole game is gonna work perfectly and and you're gonna have essentially the game and it's gonna look like this okay all right guys hopefully that explains the entire project and what you need to do hopefully you have all the tools that you need to put this together and make the game if you make the game please put your links share your links using code sculptor you can click this button here that says save and when you hit save it generates a new link for you at the top okay so if I were to bring this guy down you can see it, it, it brought this link for me and you can go to that link and then see the entire code or play out the entire code okay sorry about that let's just bring this guy back at the top all right so that's how that works you generate that link post it in the comments below some of the things I want you guys to watch out for is if you hit command R or refresh it just removes the whole thing. You have to be careful because Code Sculptor is in the browser and it doesn't save your code. So if you hit save, it'll give you that link and that link will help you. But if you don't save and you hit refresh, then all of your code just kind of goes away. So watch out for refreshing uh, randomly. And yeah, so save continuous, uh, save a lot, okay? Save constantly and then copy that link constantly so you can you can have that link just in case something bad happens okay and maybe even put this code locally it gives you a download button so every few hours you're working on this maybe hit the download button so you can download it locally 
That way, you're not in the risk of losing it, okay? After this, we're gonna work on some other really cool projects. I have that in mind, but for now, focus all your energy on rock, paper, scissors. Let's get it done. Post your codes below, post your links below. I'll have the notes to this problem below, and I'll have the solution to this problem below if you're watching it on YouTube, okay? If you're not watching this on, if you don't wanna watch this on YouTube and do it directly on my website, cleverprogrammer.com, go ahead and enroll in that school, and there you can keep track of all of your progress, and you can go there and all the resources will be there readily available. All right, guys, good luck, and I'll see you guys in the next video.